Hi, my name is Mike Ruspel. I'm a Special Olympics coach, a volunteer. Uh, I've been involved with Special Olympics for over 40 years at this time, coached many sports, and uh, have also uh, worked on GOC committees and throughout the state and other states. Uh, I've been asked to talk about fundraising. And as a coach, I can tell you, there isn't a single one of us that loves fundraising. Um, but it is something we have to do. And we have to look at it the way we look at everything in preparation for our team. There is a time to do connect recruitment. There is a time to do conditioning. There is time to do strength training, skills training, strategy, competition, game. Each of those things has a time during your season. There is no off-season for Special Olympics or for your team. So look at fundraising as being one of those components that you do sometime during that season. Um, don't try to do it while you're in your strategy and your competition phase. That's overwhelming you. You do it early on. I look at it when I'm looking at teams and I am scouting other teams. That's early. That's before I get to competition. It's the same with fundraising. I look at it as it's early. It's before I get to competition, before I get to my season. Um, a good coach knows the skill sets of his athletes. A good coach who's responsible for fundraising looks at the people in his coaching staff his family circle and those people immediately around him, their team and determines their skill sets. There's somebody there that is willing to say, oh yeah, I can do that. And suddenly fundraising is off your plate and on somebody else's plate. Um, the mom who has more people on her phone contact list from a variety of different areas in your community is a great potential fundraiser because contacts are one of the most important things you can have in fundraising. All right? um, my phone, if I meet someone and they tell me that there was such and such a company and and I kind of get an inkling that, oh, hey, this company's involved in their community and or is looking to be involved in their community. Get the information, a name, point of contact, phone number, company name. Get that information, put it into your phone contacts or get a screenshot of their business card. Make sure you let them know you're involved in Special Olympics. Go back and you scout them. And here's how you scout them. You pull out your Chamber of Commerce guide. And you can get that in any one of your towns. And it will give you so much information about the businesses and people in your community. It'll tell you that they have 1,200 employees. They've been in the community for 15 years. It often will tell you that their gross income for that company is $400,000. What's that information good for? Well, with that information, you can target your request. And when I say target your request, if you go into a company cold with no background information on them, no point of contact, that person that you talked to and put in your phone and you said, thank you, I'll give you a call, or, yeah, my son's on that same team as yours. Those things help when you make that point of contact. If you go in cold and you go in blind and you make a request to the wrong person for the wrong amount with no background on them, your success is going to go down. But if you go in and you have somebody you know personally or somebody that's been referred to you, and you know it's no longer a cold contact, now it's a personal contact. And people respond to personal. 
you know that you're going to ask for this amount of money. If I go in and I ask to the wrong person, and I ask for the wrong amount, an amount that far exceeds what the company is capable or the individual is capable of giving, I'm probably going to get a no. Um, but if I, if I do a little bit of research and I can say, you know what, in this community, they have on numerous occasions given to $1,000 to various organizations, then I have a target number that I can ask for. Um, when you do a request to somebody for, for funding, your coaches, you're passionate, you're passionate about your athletes, you're passionate about sports, that same passion, bring it to, to fundraising because that passion will ignite other people's passion and they will want to be involved. They will want to, to, to help you move your team forward. And when that commitment comes from them, make sure you invite them to come see your athletes compete. Invite them to, to Special Olympics. You may find out some of them have never been in the door and have no idea what the program is about. So you are the person who invites them, sells them, commits them to Special Olympics. Some ideas for, for asking. There are so many different ways. Not all of them work in all situations, in all communities, in all places. Um, so you have to be selective in how you do it. One of the, the best ones I've ever seen, and remember I said personal early, is a letter campaign done by your athletes. You, the members of your team, you sit them down with pen, paper, and a little bit of guidance, and you have them write a letter where it's just one paragraph that they talk about, four lines where they talk about how important being on that team is and Special Olympics is, all right? And it's a simple ask for a small amount. It could be a sponsor, an athlete, $25 an athlete. Okay, you have 10 members on your team, there's $250, maybe that pays for what the the expense was for that one day tournament that you had to drive to. Um, and those, if you can, if you can, you put a photo to it, you put the athlete's photo, but you're going to need permission before you put that photo on a document like that and you send it to someone. But you don't just send it to people you don't know. You send it to your family members. You ask, ask them to send it to their cousins, their uncles. Aunt Jean across the country might just be writing you a check if she gets a message about her niece or her nephew who's competing on your team. Okay, that's a very simple one that can be done and can raise small amounts of money. Um, if, if you have service organizations, every one of those service organizations in your community has some kind of give back to the community program. And um, you have to find out when their cycle is. Are they a, a June to July year round? Um, are they a January 1 to December 1 budget? And then do the request before they go into that budget year. Be passionate. Explain who your athletes are, what they're doing how this is going to change their lives. One page letter, one page request, and then ask them if you could come to their luncheon and talk to their group. You're going to have a chance to sit, meet with them. They're going to have a chance to ask you questions. They may be able to honor your, your full donation amount. They may not be able to honor their full donation amount, but it's very likely that before you walk out of that luncheon, they're going to pass a hat and you're going to come away with some money for your program. Okay. Um, the, another one of my favorites are our business partnerships. 
do you go down to the oil changer and get them to change your oil every month and you've done it for the last five years? Does that person know that you're involved in Special Olympics? If they don't, they should know that you're involved with Special Olympics. Everyone should know that you're involved with Special Olympics. And then you go into their place when you're doing their oil change and maybe you spend a few minutes talking to the, to the manager or the owner and you suggest, hey, could we get uh, $5 off of every oil change on Tuesdays for the month of April and May when we were training to go to state summer games. Well, that's eight times every one of his customers on those eight days becomes a donor to you because you get $5 off of every oil change that he does or $10 or maybe it's 10%. But negotiate that and it can make it a huge difference. It can be thousands of dollars in a very short period of time with you doing nothing more than an ask. Okay. Um, there are so many ideas for fundraising. You can Google fundraising and be overwhelmed with all of the different options. You can walk into Barnes and Noble and there's a whole section of books on making fundraising fun. All right. Um, if you uh, need assistance, Special Olympics Colorado always knows how to get a hold of me. And I am more than willing to talk to anyone personally to see if we can help you and your program and your athletes move forward. In the spirit of Special Olympics, thanks coach.